Namaste. Welcome to you, uh, Women Run Strong, um, to this post-run yoga to support your running practice. <laughs> okay, so I won't spend too much time talking. What you need for this um, practice is a long rolled blanket or a firm towel that's about uh, the length of your body from the back of your head to your um, the buttocks, so the length of the spine, and a block of some kind. You could use a very thick, firm book, um, or if you've got a yoga block or a brick, that's ideal. And some of you might also, in fact, everybody's going to use a belt, so a belt of some kind. It could be a tea towel, it could be a dressing gown belt. If you've got a yoga belt, all the better. We're going to pop our um, props for the moment to one side and this blanket I'm just going to pop over there um, and these two to one side and we're going to come down to lie on the back. So bend your knees into your chest, hug them towards you and then rolling down onto your back. And if like me you've got your hair up, maybe taking your hair out as well. So we're just going to begin by hugging the knees into the chest. This posture is called Apanasana um, and it is a really nice pose to help to release tension from the low back. So let's use it with a, a nice rotating motion with the knees. So holding your knees towards you and rolling the knees in a circle that feels comfortable for you. It's quite big circles really in one direction. And then we'll go in the opposite direction, just massaging out any tension from the low back. Very good. And then bringing your knees to center, keeping your toes together, taking your knees apart and making big circles, circling the knees together and apart. So just stirring the thigh bones and the hips. Moving at a pace that feels comfortable for you. Might be a little quicker or a little slower than this. And reversing your motion, going in the opposite direction. And noting where you feel fatigued, where you feel tired or where you feel tension. And just taking a little bit of extra care with those areas. Bringing your knees together, keeping the hands on the knees, make the tiniest circles you can. Feeling that massaging effect come to the very center of the pelvis, so the, the fused sacral vertebra that join the two hip bones together. And then doing the same thing in the opposite direction, almost indiscernible circle that just lets you rock on your sacrum behind the body. Excellent. And then very gently just letting the knees, uh, the feet come down to the floor one at a time. And we're going to take our feet apart so that they are about shoulder width apart and just release the arms to wherever feels comfortable. Here, a little action across the abdominal muscles, so gently engaging your abdominal muscles, maybe even your pelvic floor, and sway the knees from side to side. Doesn't matter where you get to, the idea is to, to uh, start creating the movement and then explore how open your body feels. So if your body feels really comfortable, really at ease, you might begin to lower the knees towards the floor a little bit more, slowing the movement down as you do so. Just exploring beginning to lengthen, but at the same time bringing that nurturing movement. Softening, softening the effort. Going maybe two more times to each side, again, can, keeping great control of the abdominal muscles feeling the lengthening across the hips. And then 
returning to center. And then here, just bringing the feet maybe just a touch closer together, we're going to cross the right foot over the left thigh. We want really the, the ankle or the shin to be resting on the left thigh rather than the foot itself, because that twists the ankle in a, in a not great position. But we want it also to be comfortable for your knee. So if you need to, flex your right foot, draw the toes back towards the knee, and that will help to stabilize the knee joint on your right side. Firm in your belly muscles, drawing your left foot off the ground so you draw your left knee towards you. And this is a traditional figure four stretch, but we're going to do it in a different way. So we've got both feet flexed, we've got our abdominal muscles engaged, and hands can be resting by the side, palms up or down, it doesn't matter. We're gonna make knee circles or circles with the left knee. And as you do that, Explore how it feels in your body, where you feel perhaps a sense of lengthening or releasing of tension. And you might want to work a little deeper in those areas. So if it feels good to have the left knee over to the left, then you can really get access to the, um, the structures around the outside of the right hip and the right buttock. And it might feel better to have the left knee over to the right a little bit. You can sway from side to side. You'll find that it does take a little bit of uh, tummy muscle action to keep stable in your core, but you can do that. You can do that. Activate it. You're all strong. Making any movements that feel good. So circling in both directions, swaying the knee from side to side. And we're gently going to come back to center and allow the left foot to come to the mat, which will help that left hip flexor to feel good and nicely released. And then keeping the same position of the legs and firmness in the belly, allowing the left knee to come over to the left and the right knee, the right foot and leg to follow. Now, if you're lucky, you'll get your right foot to the floor and that, that will allow you to release into this more stretched position, more open position. But if you are finding that you don't have quite the space to be able to do that, if you place your block underneath your left thigh to support the left thigh away from the floor, then it will allow you to feel that same sense of contact and release. Wherever you get to, just taking a moment to feel the effect of holding this position in the body. Taking a few deep breaths. And lots of people will feel this across the right hip, maybe into the right uh, torso, into the right waist. If you want to increase that feeling, you can reach your right arm over your right, uh, over the head, out to the side and over the head. Just making sure that your right elbow is nice and comfortable, the shoulders are relaxed, the wrist is relaxed on the floor. So if they're off the floor, dropping your arm out to the side a little until you find contact with the floor. Taking some deep breaths here. And if it doesn't feel quite stretchy enough for you, um, although stretchy is uh, subjective, if you'd like a little bit more, if it feels not, not so intense, you can bend your knees towards you. So bend your left knee to bring it towards your left shoulder. And that increases the rotation a little bit um, higher up in the body. So you feel that uh, stretch or that movement a little bit more. Take one more deep breath in. And deep breath out. And we're going to relax the right arm down to the side. Bring your knees back to center using your tummy muscles to gently uncurl. Hug the right leg towards you and keeping the left foot on the floor, just making circles with the right leg. Excellent. Now we're going to take our belts and wrap the belt around the heel of the right foot and lengthen the right leg straighter than it currently is. 
So it doesn't matter here if your leg is not absolutely straight. In fact, I'd encourage you not to practice uh, stretching postures or indeed any postures with your knees locked straight. So a little softness in the knee is useful here. And the other thing is that you can have your leg lowered towards the floor if that helps you to feel length in the back of the leg. So we're aiming here to find length in the hamstrings. Um, but if you want to, uh, but you might feel it slightly differently. That's okay. And we want to relax the shoulders of the upper body and the arms as much as possible. So let the upper body be quite passive here. So take a few moments in the position you find yourself in to breathe, relax your face, relax now the abdominal muscles. And after a few breaths, maybe just tipping your right toes back towards the body, flexing through the heel a little bit more. That might uh, increase your feelings of length. And if that is still feeling very, very comfortable, you don't feel like you're getting much out of it, then lengthen your left leg along the mat so the toes are flexed back towards the body, the heel pressing away as well. And here, softening the features of the face, the chest, the abdomen, breathing nice, long, slow breaths. From here, we're going to pass the belt into the right hand. So both pieces of belt into the right hand and gently with good control across the abdominal muscles, Allow the right leg to come out to the right side. Maybe the right elbow even comes to the floor for a bit of support here. If you find this very easy, if your right leg has gone all the way to the floor, you almost certainly have released your belt and let your leg come away from your head. So if you bring your foot back towards your head, you'll find that that stretch is a little bit better for you. Keep your left hip grounded and your left foot on the floor as well. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then very gently with good control, coming back to center, we're gonna pass the belt into the left hand, keeping the right hip on the ground. And that's the back of the hip rather than the buttock. So the back of the hip on the ground, just let the right foot float over the left hip. So we don't want to twist all the way to the left. It's not a twisting posture. We're just allowing the foot to come across the body to rest about over the left hip. Again, if it feels easy and you need a little bit more, flexing both of your feet and drawing your foot back towards your body, back towards your head a little bit more. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Coming back to center, bending first the left knee in, if it isn't already, releasing your belt, bending your right knee in. We're gonna hug both legs towards us, make any movements that feel good. So little rotational movements, like we did at the beginning of the class, maybe individually rather than together. And then you can take your right foot down, cross your left leg over your right thigh. Again, making sure that it's the shin or the ankle of the left leg that is on the right thigh rather than the outside of the foot, which tends to create this not very helpful position of the ankle. We're going to flex both feet, stabilize the tummy muscles with a little effort, relax the arms down and draw the right knee into the chest. And then exploring movements here, maybe making circles with the, the right knee. And you can go in both directions, of course. This is a really nice way to do the figure four stretch because it doesn't put any uh, effort into the upper body. Uh, it doesn't close the chest. And then we can sway a little from side to side, explore how far to the right you can get your right leg to go to feel a nice 
sense of lengthening, of creating space in the left hip and the outside of the hip. You're welcome to uh, do this position pretty much every day if you want to. It's incredibly good for your hips and really nice for releasing tension from the gluteus muscles and other muscles that you might find are a little bit tense after you're running. Coming back to the center, you're going to drop the right foot to the floor and then with really good tummy control, allow the right knee to go to the right side and the left leg to follow, just maintaining this position. If you find that you're a long way from the floor with your right thigh or your left foot, you can take your block and place it underneath the thigh. So you get that sense of contact, which allows you to release into this posture and hold it with less effort. We're trying to reduce the amount of effort we're holding with so that we can feel a sense of release. So once you're here, just, just uh, feeling how it feels for you. And it might be that you'd like a little bit of extra stretch down the side of the left, left side of the body. So you can raise your left arm either out to the side or over your head. Wherever you can easily get the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist to feel supported by the floor. And that opens up the space underneath the rib cage. You can breathe deeply into the space. And if you still feel like it's just not quite enough for you, you can bend your right knee towards your right shoulder, which opens up that space even more. And for some people that will hit the sweet spot. And for some people that will be too intense. So just explore your, your own reaction to the yoga. Let's take another few deep breaths here, trying to soften the features of the face. And now we're in the posture, we can also relax those tummy muscles a little bit as well. To release out, bringing your left hand back to center and then just easing good tummy muscle control easing the knees back to center as well. I'm going to bend the left knee in towards the chest and just hold it for a moment, maybe doing a few uh, circles with the left knee in each direction. And now we come to our uh, hamstring stretch. I really don't like calling them hamstring stretches because we're really talking about stretching the whole of the back of the left leg as we do this. So, and the back of the left side of the body. So lengthening your foot up to the ceiling with your belt wrapped around the heel of the foot. And again, you might find that you've got a difference between your left and right sides. Maybe your left leg's a little bit stiffer. You need to have the leg released a little bit further away from you. Uh, you might find it's, this is my more open side. So it might be a little bit more towards you perhaps. Holding the belt where you feel you can relax your arms and your shoulders and your chest uh, very much. And remembering not to lock the knee straight on this leg. So a little softness in the knee. And if you need a lot of softness in the knee, quite a bent knee, and that's okay too. Sometimes when you've got a very, very straight leg, the stretch comes a lot into the calf muscle, which also needs lengthening, but is perhaps not the emphasis of this particular movement. Relaxing your face, breathing deeply. And lift off for a few breaths, you need a little bit more. Tipping your left toes towards your body, extending through the left heel, that increases that uh, long energetic line down the back of the left leg. And if you need more than that, lengthening your right leg along the mat with your toes pointed up, your heel pressing away as well. Let's take a deep breath in here. And a deep breath out. Maybe one more like that. If you feel the urge, you can sigh through your mouth. 
just for that one breath there. Okay, so continuing to breathe through your nose, take your belt into your left hand and stabilizing with your tummy muscles, allow your left leg to come out to the left, maybe the left elbow rests to the floor and keeping that sense of length. So if you let go of the leg, it will come certainly lower towards the floor, but we want to keep that sense of length. So keep drawing the left leg towards you to a point that feels comfortable. Stabilizing the right hip on the floor, that's the back of the hip, the buttock, making sure that's not lifting, using a little bit of tummy control while you're here, taking a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Maybe one more, deep breath in, and a deep breath out. And gently drawing your left foot back to center, Stabilizing the back of the left hip on the floor, drawing the left foot over the right hip. And again, if it feels really easy, just drawing your foot a little bit closer towards your face will increase that sense of length. And it's usually these few centimeters um, that make a difference. A deep breath in. Still extending through both heels, deep breath out. One more deep breath in and deep breath out. Let's move the left leg back to center, soften the knee, bend the knee into your chest. You can take your belt and place it to one side and then draw both knees into your chest, hug them towards you. Make any movements that feel good, maybe a sort of rocking and rolling, rotating the knees. Might be quite nice here. So we're going to finish this practice with happy baby pose or finish this part of the practice rather with happy baby pose. And for this, we take our feet, knees bent, feet up as if they were standing on the ceiling, hold onto the outsides of the feet and draw the knees towards our armpits. So not really, really wide, towards the armpits, towards the sides of the torso, sides of the body and keeping the feet parallel to the ceiling, the soles of the feet parallel to the ceiling and the knees very bent. And eventually knees will come lower and lower and lower down over the course of a lot of practice. But at the moment, uh, just aiming to feel a nice sense of openness and release through the pelvis, perhaps the inner thighs here. It might be different for you, that's okay. Deep breaths. Now, if you're happy in this pose, staying here. If happy baby is not so comfortable, you can do this one-legged. So you take your left foot to the floor and you can wrap your belt around the, the heel of your right foot and hold with your belt instead. And then you would do this one side at a time for about five, to 10 breaths, long deep breaths. So if you're doing that one-sided, pausing the video, if you're holding happy, uh, and doing it to both sides, if you're holding happy baby pose, try holding with your hands on the insides of your feet. And that just gives you a slightly different feel to the pose. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a pronounced difference actually. And the other thing you can do is gently sway your tailbone from side to side in this position, which is really lovely to do as well, nice and freeing. And then we're going to uh, bring our tailbones back to center, soften our knees together and relax the feet one at a time to the floor. One and two. Excellent. So you can take a stretch here that's sometimes useful after being uh, sort of having the hip flexors so active for so long. Take a stretch to point the toes away from you, point the fingers away from you, let your low back come away from the floor as you breathe in. And just relaxing the feet, the back, and the hands as you breathe out. Let's do one more like that, breathing in. Lengthening the toes away from you, the fingertips away from you, the back 
comes away from the floor, a little breathing in. And relaxing as you breathe out. Bend your knees back to uh, bring your feet onto the floor. And then taking your block, we're going to take our block first onto the lowest side. So it's the same if you've got a book. If you're using a book, then keep on the lowest possible height of the book. If you're using a, a brick, I'll let you, um, we'll explore different things. So gently engaging the buttocks to lift the hips. We're going to slide that block underneath the back of the body. We want it to be underneath the back of the hips. So supporting the sacrum that we st stimulated earlier and not high up, so not into the waist and the soft parts of the body that are above the hips and not really, really low on the buttocks either. So underneath the back of the hips. And then we're going to bring our feet up into a pose called Viparitti Karani, which is sometimes done against the wall, lugs up the wall. So we're gonna bring the knees in one at a time. And then a little firmness in the belly muscles, lengthening your legs upwards. And again, not locking your knees straight, keeping a little softness in the knees. Doesn't matter how soft the knees are here. We're allowing the thigh bones to drop into the hip sockets with the aid of gravity. And we're just going to hold here with our arms nice and wide, head and shoulders and neck nice and relaxed, and then circle the feet at the ankles. So really relax the feet, let them circle at the ankles a few times in each direction. Apologies for all of the clicking that's happening at this end. And then if you want to, you can just wiggle your toes as well. Nice. And then in stillness, you can have the legs together if it feels more supportive. Taking three deep breaths. If you can, close your eyes and soften the forehead, the jaw. And when you're ready, you can gently bend your knees into your chest a little and take your feet to the floor one at a time, one and two. Now we're just resting here for a moment. And for those of you who are very comfortable on this lower uh, edge of the block, lower level of the block, um, you can stay here for the moment. For anyone who feels like they've got a little bit more room to move in their low back, you can gently engage the buttocks, lift the hips, and flip your block onto its long side so that you get a long side to rest the back of your pelvis on. And here, if you want to, you can explore Fipperiti Karani in, on this uh, variation of the block. So if you're not up on this top side, you can do Fipperiti Karani again. And if you are, you can explore. It needs to be really stable underneath the body, bending the knees in one at a time, and then lengthening your legs up. And just finding that gravity really aids the um, legs to sit into the hips here. We've got a, a softening of the abdomen once you're in the pose, a softening of the chest. If you need a gaze point, a drishti point, your toes are your drishti point. And here, just taking a few deep breaths. If this doesn't feel stable, then don't hold it. Come out of it nice and gently with good control. And so when you come to do this practice again, if you're comfortable on this higher side of the block, you can do it immediately from there. Bend the knees in towards the chest one at a time, then feet to the floor one at a time. And then whatever level of block you're on, we're going to lengthen the legs along the mat, taking the feet out to the sides. 
So lengthening one leg and then the other. Feet are about shoulder width, maybe even slightly wider. And we're letting the feet, the toes fall open with the back of the pelvis supported and the hip flexors allowing a little space there at the front of the pelvis. So if this feels good, you can hold on to this pose. If you would like to explore it a little bit deeper, you can reach your arms over your head and let your elbows, shoulders and wrists soften to the floor. And that might feel even better underneath the rib cage, creating some space. If it feels a little bit too stretchy, particularly if you're up on the high side of the block, you can gently turn your block to the lower setting. So lifting the buttocks, squeezing the buttocks, and then gently lowering the hips down. And try it on the lower setting. You might find that that is just incredibly comfortable compared to the higher setting. If it feels too intense to have both legs stretched out, you can do one at a time. Whichever position you're in, taking a few deep breaths, softening the features of the face, the chest, the jaw. If you're doing one side, swapping to the opposite side. Another few deep breaths. And when you're ready to come out of this pose, allowing your arms to come down if they've been over your head, a little firmness in the belly, you can turn the toes upwards and then bring the feet in one at a time. Now, if you've been up on a higher setting of the block, you're going to lift the hips and turn to the lower setting of the block and rest for another couple of breaths with the knees bent and the feet supporting the pelvis. And then we can all release together. So a gentle effort in the buttocks to lift the hips just enough to slide the block out from underneath you. And then let your hips come down into the mat. Place your block to one side. Take a moment with your spine in this more neutral position. Just feel what your body needs to do after this. So if you're inclined to extend your legs, then you can try that. Maybe that feels good. If you're inclined to sway your knees from side to side, a little firmness in the belly as you do that not into a full spinal twist, just a gentle sway. And if you feel inclined to bend your knees into your chest, hug them towards you. Any of these, you can do all of these if you want to. Whatever feels good. When you feel that you've uh, brought yourself back to comfort, we're going to roll to one side and just come up into sitting for long enough to take our rolled blankets and place them along the mat. So we want the roll of the blanket to be along the length of the spine. And if you want, uh, if you've got another blanket handy, as we're gonna be here for a few uh, minutes, you might want to, to bring that to cover yourself as well. So bring your, your rolled up blanket right up to your, the base of your back, to your back buttocks and lie down over the length of your blanket. And if this blanket easily supports the back of your head, that's great. And if it doesn't, if, it's, it, does, if it finishes early, just popping your block at the end of the blanket and resting your head on your block. I think I've got a belt somewhere there, yep. Yeah. So with the feet uh, nice and wide apart and the arms relaxed away from the body, feel the back of the body molding itself around the support along your spine. Feel the shoulder blades able to move down around it to open the chest, soften the arms, open the space in the abdomen, the bottom of the rib cage, underneath the rib cage. 
and a little bit into the pelvis too. Now if this feels a little bit too um, intense for the low back, you can bend your knees and place your feet on the floor, maybe a little bit further away from your buttocks than normal, and that will help to stabilize your low back. And if you're feeling incredibly comfortable in this posture, you might want to bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees rest out to the side. And this posture with this, the legs this way is called Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined down angle pose. So whether your legs are long, knees bent with the feet on the floor or feet together with the knees out to the side. Close your eyes if you're able to or gaze towards one point on the ceiling. Breathe deeply, find that space in the front of the body, down the sides of the body, even behind the body to move the breath into. Allow your body to release as much effort as possible. Let go. Relax. Surrender downward. If you've adopted bound angle pose with the soles of the feet together, very gently using your tummy muscles, one knee up at a time. And then if you want to, you can lengthen your legs away from you. That's just to bring us back to a more neutral position with the hips as well. Another couple of deep breaths. And then whatever position you're in, just rolling slightly to one side so you can ease the blanket out from underneath you and roll back onto your back. Allow the body to find its comfortable place in this new shape. And you can remain here doing relaxation for the next 5, 10, 15 minutes if you like, if you've got time. And what that will do is that will help to restore your balance of energy. Not only from your running, but also from the yoga practice. And I appreciate not everybody has that time. So if you need to come out of relaxation now, bending your knees into your chest, hugging them towards you a little bit, gently making any movements, rocking side to side with the knees and the hips, keeping them still gently rolling the head from side to side, releasing tension from the neck and shoulders. And when you're ready, you can roll onto one side, curl up for a moment. And then in your own time, come to any comfortable seated position. Bring your palms together at the center of your chest. Lift your chest, but take your chin only towards your chest. Feel that gentle length down the back of the neck. Find a smile. A 
allow a smile to gently blossom onto your face. And when you're ready, raise your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for this uh, short post-run practice. I hope you found it useful and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye now.